Okay, welcome back folks. Um, following our Christmas theme and our Christmas cake, today we are going to be putting together our Christmas pudding. So I'm just going to run through what I have here right in front of you. Um, so we have some jumbo raisins, we have some wild apple, some eggs, some spices, we have some sugar, some walnuts, some mixed peel, orange and lemon. The lemon's actually hiding underneath the sugar right there. Some white flour and some breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are a little bit of an unusual colour and that is because we don't waste anything in this house. So if there's any leftover pancakes or anything like that it just goes in a freezer bag and that's what we use as our breadcrumbs so again there's nothing wasted we have some homemade wine we have some brandy and we have a local Nova Scotia stout which I'm looking forward to actually having a little taste of and some butter so what I will do is I will get the rest of those ingredients measured out and I will get back to you. I have chopped everything up now and grated all the butter and measured out all of the rest of the stuff to go in here. And all we're doing is we're just going to throw everything in this mixing bowl and similar to the Christmas cake we're just going to pop it over on the fire um for the night and let all those flavors um all amalgamate in there so really i'm just going to throw everything in all the um, ingredients list will be down below um so we just throw in our raisins and our um breadcrumbs walnuts peel sugar flour what I have forgotten to put on the flour there is some baking powder and if I don't do that now I will completely forget and then I'll wonder why our Christmas pudding hasn't risen. So I'm just going to put that into here now. I remember one year I made Christmas cake and I wondered what was wrong with it come the end of the um, cooking and when I went back through the ingredients list I realised I'd forgotten to put all the eggs in there so it was it was an okay Christmas cake but it wasn't a brilliant Christmas cake and a mistake I've never ever done since that moment so I just added in my bacon soda the apple I'm going to throw in don't worry about the apple being all different um, sizes we like to be rustic here, it's one of the things that I just don't worry about sizes and all of that sort of stuff. You know, it's nice to get a little bit of a bite. So in goes the apple. In goes our two eggs from our chickens outside. In goes grated butter. Now, I suppose in the real recipe you would use suet um, but I have always used butter and I find it just works the same. Some people may argue different. And my spices, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, cloves and nutmeg. And again with our Christmas cake we like it heavily spiced and the same with the Christmas uh, pudding we like to have it heavily spiced. So we need to just make sure we get all of that in there. And it's amazing how the smell, you know, nothing's mixed. There's, there's hardly anything really going on in there right now. But the smell coming out of the bowl is just awesome. So we have all our ingredients in there. The last thing that we need to add and the best part of the recipe is our wine. This is homemade beach wine, I think. So we've added the wine. We add in the local Nova Scotia stout. That all goes in there. 
and we add in our brandy like so and then all we need to do is go in here and give it a really good mix get all those ingredients all mixed up and I'll just move this board on just so you can see a little better so again we just go in we mix it all up really really well and if it's too dry you can just add a little bit more um, wine or a little bit more stout but bear in mind that the butter is gonna melt so you don't want to end up with too a uh, runny a mixture and the flavours will all mix in there as it goes on the fire overnight. It's not going to cook the mixture, it's just going to melt all the butter so everything gets coated and all that nice juice that we will have. And that is about mixed up as good as I would like. Everything's coated in there. I'll just bring the bowl up so you can see. Try not to spill it. And as you can see, everything's in there and that looks really, really good. So I'm going to go and pop that on the fire and where it will stay for the rest of the day and for the night. And tomorrow it will be time to pop it in our pudding dish and we will cook it. I will see you then. Bye for now. So folks, it's the next day um, and our Christmas pudding mix has been on and off the fire and it looks very much different from what it did yesterday when we just mixed all the ingredients together. I am going to apologise, the light is really bad today. It's a really dull day outside and the lighting in the kitchen is not the best so I do apologise if you can't see very well. But I'll lift her up as much as I can and as you can see it's thickened up and it's all just come together really really nice. And I know I keep going on about smells, but I really wish there was such a thing as smell a vision because you wouldn't believe how good this smells right now. So anyways, we're going to be cooking the Christmas pudding. So first of all, we need to put it in a Christmas pudding tin. And one thing that's really, really important is make sure that your tin is buttered really, really well. I have not done this in the past and I've rushed this process and I've been sorry because when I have come to tip my pudding out it's all just stuck in there and you end up having to put it together like bricks and it's just really not something that you want to have to deal with when you know you want a nice Christmas pudding. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, start filling up the pudding tin with the mixture. And it's a bit of a tradition for us um, in the bad household to have a Christmas cake and a Christmas pudding and Christmas mince meat so we can make some nice mince pies. So I was just wondering folks, is there anything that you like to make or cook um, as part of a traditional Christmas for you? Um, I'm just curious to see what other people like to do. So if there is something then give me a, put that down in the comments below and we'll, uh, we'll see what people come up with there. So it fills the tin up about three quarters, which is just perfect. We need to have a little bit of room um, to make sure that it doesn't overflow because we do have a lid for this tin. So we have most of the mixture out now, we've got all the scrapings out there. So we'll just take the leftovers off the spoon. Waste not, want not, we get every last little drop that we can. It's all flavour, like so. And there's a few little bit scrapings in there, but they're pretty dried up from around the edge where it's been on the, on the fire. Now. So what we're going to do now is we just spread it out into the, the pudding tin and ideally I did want to have a tin that didn't have this middle bit in but 
It's a bit funny over here for some stuff. You, you're just limited to what you can buy. Like we can't get mince pie tins, the little shallow mince pie tins here, or I've never seen them here. And the one that I use is, is very much dog-eared and getting very old in the tooth. But anyways, we just use what we have available to us and it just makes it. So we have the pudding already in there now. And we have the little lid that we just slip on to the pudding. Make sure that the lid is on properly. I have also picked a, this up once before and the lid wasn't on and it fell on the floor and well you don't really want to know. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pop it into my pan with some water and I shall take you right over to that. Right, we're over at the stove and as you can see I have my little helper and budgie here to see what's going on. The girls and are always a learning process, they just like to watch mum do everything, which I really, really like. Anyway, so we have our pan, this is my jam pan, my smaller jam pan, and we have, um, it filled up to with water to about there. Um, that's kind of hard for you guys to see but if I lift the pan up it's probably about here filled with water and all we do is carefully pop our pudding in the water like that and I'm just going to grab a bowl because I usually like to put a bowl on top um, so it doesn't jump about in the pan so we place the bowl on the top the lid on the pan and we put the heat on until this boils and when it boils we turn it down to a simmer now this Christmas pudding will take about two hours to steam we will check it after an hour just to make sure because sometimes things can vary and after the two hours and it's cooked we'll take it out and let it cool and then we will turn it upside down and cross fingers hope for the best so when we come to do that, I will get you back and we'll see what we have. Okay folks, the Christmas pudding is done and I've poked a knife in there to make sure and it come out nice and clean. It actually took about two and a half to three hours to cook this time. Um, I did mention that sometimes it varies and the cooking time can be two hours. Um, this one did take a little bit longer than usual. It's still quite hot, um, but as you can see, it's uh, looking good. Right, I have the Christmas pudding here ready to turn out on the plate. And unfortunately, what happened to me yesterday was my battery died just as I was about to turn, do the turnout video, um, which meant that the pudding went cold um, and I've had to reheat it up again because I knew it wouldn't come out once it had gone cold. So hopefully this will go well. Um, and if not, then everyone will see it go wrong. So we put the plate on the top of the pudding and we turn it over and hope for the best. And I can actually feel that that has come out. Give it a few bangs just to make sure. And as you can see, it's come out nice and clean. It actually couldn't have come out any better than that. So that's a good result. There's a few little bits just come up off the top there, but that's not a problem. So there we go, the finished pudding. And we will be doing the same thing as we did with the Christmas cake. We'll be putting a little bit of whiskey over the top of it, but I'll let it cool down a little bit first. Um, and then every two weeks up until Christmas, we will repeat the process just the same as the Christmas cake. So there you go, that's the finished pudding. I think the next video will be... Um, Christmas mince meat for mince pies. So if you liked the video, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up and make sure you click the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And bye for now.